Hi everyone, <laughs> this video is going to be filmed live, so this is hopefully no voiceover in the end, we will see. And as you can see, this is a reused canvas. This is a canvas I was not lucky twice already, so I made a pouring with this, didn't like it, poured over, didn't like it either, and now I just added a thin layer of gesso just to keep the new paint something to grab onto. So you can still see the underpainting through. And this video is about a re-re-challenge that I received from Catherine, which she responded with to the space resin artwork that I challenged her with. So in case you did not see this video, please make sure to check it out. I will make a link in the corner somewhere where you can click it. And yeah, she challenged me to make a Dutch pour, which I must confess I didn't know what it is. <laughs> so I had to do some research and I think we can get this done. I don't know. This is a technique I normally tend to fail completely. So we will see what this is going to turn into. And first off I'm making the base layer of the white paint. I've started pre-mixing all my colors so that I don't have to mix them each time when I do want to make a pour, which should save me pretty much time. So. You will see me less mixing paints in the future and more using the pre-mixed ones. But the mixture that I'm using is pretty much the same that I always do. So spreading this around. By the way, do you know why it's called a Dutch pour? Do you know which Dutch person <laughs> invented it or was lucky to be named after? So I myself do not know too many Dutch artists out there doing the pourings. So the biggest I think is Anne-Marie. Perhaps it was her, her idea? I don't know. If you know, let me know. <laughs> so, okay, as far as I've learned, it is making the base layer paint, adding some paints in drops or pools, then adding some white against it, pushing it over and pushing all the color onto the canvas. This is so gonna fail. <laughs> For the colors that I'm using, I'm having my phthalo blue here. I added a bit of silicone in this one. This is an emerald green. Also with silicone. This is my Artina gold, it has no silicone. And adding silicone or not was totally random, so I didn't put any thought into it. This is magenta, also mixed with some silicone. And this is a turquoise, one of the pre-mixed ones. It's from Martina, but I used, it was one third empty, so I just used this bottle to pre-mix the paint. And I'm going to put this here, perhaps. Okay, and then there is the white paint, which also contains a bit of silicone. I will just add it around here. Okay, and my trusted hair dryer. I will go for the low setting first, push the white over hopefully, <laughs> and then I will try to push the paints outwards. I have so no idea if this works.
Well, it's not going to get any better. We can try using a torch and see what this can do. Not so much apparently, especially not in the areas where I would have needed some cells to happen, especially here and this kind of muddy area. Well, for me it's not really a complete success, I would say, but this might be also course because I'm so much into these design ring pours currently, so it should be your vote if you think this is something pretty or not. I'm going to let this dry anyways, let's see how the colors look when they are dry. The gold should be shiny, this um, magenta should be a bit darker, the Taylor blue should be much darker and the turquoise pretty much stays what it looks like now. And I will show you the final result when it's dry and let's see what you vote for, if you like it or not. If you don't like it, I will make a pour over it, the fourth one by then. And let's see how big we can pile up this canvas before I can get something pretty out of it. So perhaps it's doomed, I don't know. So see you later when it's dry. Okay, it's me again. <laughs> the other one is still drying and as I still had a couple of the premixed paints left here, I want to give it another try on a smaller piece. This is a 30 by 30 canvas, the other one was 40 by 40. This is a new one, but we will see. Something I seem to have made wrong is that the base layer paint was a bit too thick, so I thinned it down a bit more. Going to make the same thing as I did just a couple of seconds ago. And yeah, trying to make this work. <laughs> okay, let's see, same approach here. Well, I must say I like this look pretty much more than the last one. It looks more soft and feathered. It feels like I should torching it, here especially. Meh. I guess you never know if it's a good thing to torch something before you do it. Um, yeah, it's pretty much unpredictable still.
Well, 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 <laughs> let's come to the final assessment. And I must say, this technique is not going to be my technique. <laughs> so let's come to the first painting that I did on the, I would say, cursed canvas, because again, this seems to be cursed again. I am not so much over the moon with the entire design. Color-wise, I think it's pretty cool, but the design is, well, this area here is kind of pretty and I also like the color in the mixing here, but overall it looks like a bit mushed up and yeah, grayed up. So I'm not really a fan of the entire look of this area here and well, so many others. <laughs> Besides all of this, the white that I've used grazed here, so there is a pretty large gap here, which I hate as well. So it was my base layer paint, which is basically intended for a thin base layer and not for pouring itself. So this dried quicker than the rest amount of the acrylics and therefore the grazing happened. So this one is a fail, I'd say. I'm going to put this aside and use it for, I don't know, something resin, I think. So to at least save the canvas in the future. Let's hope this will break the curse for this canvas then. <laughs> The second one that I did is at least prettier. It's this year. I kind of like it. Still thinking this is not my technique, so probably I will leave this to the people who are really good at this. Um, I like the colors again. I like the design more than the first one. Perhaps when I put it this way or this way. So I kind of agree with this one. So this is a, a keep, I think. Next one that I did is the round one. And although the colors are the same, it looks kind of pretty, but still the curse happened again. Can you see the board here? This was once covered with the fabric, so it just lifted off when it was drying. Isn't that fun? So, yeah, so seems to be cursed. Um, the design still is kind of pretty and the colors are... I'm not so sure about the golden blob in the middle. I was not sure if I should tilt it more to put it off or put this down. I just did not know. And yeah, what what do you think? Well, I think I can keep it. It's pretty thin, so I have no idea what to do with it. I cannot even glue it down because now the canvas is smaller than the ring itself. Perhaps I could glue it down and paint some gold around it to have it like framed or so. I am open for suggestions. Let me know what you would do with it. Do you like it? Do you think it's kind of pretty? Also what you would do with it. If you would glue it down here and paint around it or if you... I, I don't... I really don't know. Well. And the last one, which was the heart, which I thought I finally figured it out. I don't think I did. So this is the result. It is not as pleasing as I hoped it is. This was the poor way the paint was thin as well. So it really made pretty cells. So if you belong to those people who love and want to have cells, this is a technique you might want to go to. But I'm not so crazy about cells anymore. So I think my technique is the design ring pour. So I kind of fell in love with it and this seems to be my thing, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, overall it looks a bit mushed up together here again and uh, uh, yeah. So overall I leave this to be a majority vote, which one you probably like the best or if they were fails all over from your point of view. What do you think? Catherine, I need to say this really was a challenge for me. I gave it four attempts and I think I'm pretty much done with this technique. Unless there is someone here who tells me what I did wrong and how I can make the prettiest out of them for the next attempts. I don't know. There are so many out there who managed to do the Dutch pour, whatever they are called Dutch pour. And so I'll leave them up to you, I think, and I keep for my design ring pours. Because, to be honest, this is what I'm good in. So this is just 
pretty this is my my taste of design and my table is too small to show it in total but you have seen it in my video so this is what i really love looking at so yeah nevertheless i hope you enjoyed watching this challenge if you would like to challenge me for something of course you can do this um, I will always try and do my best to make this kind of work or not. Um, if you like the video still leave me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so far. So like and share the video with everyone who would like to see it perhaps. And if you want to support me of course you can click the links below the video to get my affiliate links for the paints and the materials that I've used and there's also my Etsy store if you want to get some of my well better pours I say um, yeah and if you want just to get in touch with me and show me your results you can use my social media links which you can also find down below in the video description where you can find pretty much everything so yeah I hope you had fun I had in a way <laughs> and Catherine I will challenge you for another one which I will just cut into after this scene here ends and you probably will have fun making this because it was really fun to do it was great and a really great giveaway for Christmas birthdays or whatever so yeah thank you for your time thank you for watching and other than that I hope to see you in my next videos <laughs> have a great day bye bye